day 86 of trying to get the Chanter video done without crashing. Um, I've done this about seven or eight times now. Um, it just seems like I'm trying to show you guys as much as I can, but I'm not going to be able to because I get like two encounters in and the game crashes. So I'm going to cut my losses, show you the abilities up to level five, show you one combat, and then cover what I can. Um, before I start, I want to go into a few... What's funny is this doesn't happen when I'm not running recording software. It just does not happen. I can go for like an hour and a half, two hours without a hiccup. But the, the recording software's on. Nothing else on my computer's on. I've tried rebooting and everything else. It just seems to want to crash. It just freezes up. It's like a memory leak or something. I'm not sure. But what I, I probably won't show you any of the major implications. But I'm gonna, I want to show you how chance, phrases and chants work. So, to explain what I think about the Chanter class, <clears throat> they're very versatile, incredibly versatile. Um, just like I think most of the Spellcaster classes are easily versatile, but the thing that makes this, this Chanter different is the Chanter strength, I think, in the game, more so than anything, is increasing your party's ability to fight multiple encounters before using the rest. It sounds strange, but they have abilities that kind of overlap with other classes, and they have summons. They're a summoner class, and you don't have to use them as a summoner class. They can be used in other ways, but they have, like, every level of spell has, like, two summons, or more. Like, um, I've only seen two levels of their major invocations, but they have, like, a lot of summons. Um, which is probably why they're getting toned down. It's probably the same thing that happened in the IE games, where you like the or in Baldur's Gate one in particular, where you could summon eight, you know, level one monsters or something, and uh, and it's just too much. And in this, it's a similar issue where the the summons are just too stout, or there's too many. And that's not to say that their other abilities aren't overpowered, because there are a couple that I think might be, but. just the summons are wacky I also kind of wonder if they're supposed to fade after combat I think they are because there's no way to really de-summon these things in combat or out of combat so maybe they just haven't added the de-summon button yet or maybe they're not meant to last after combat I'm not sure we're picking moon god light because it works good with a bunch of different classes in my opinion it works really well with barbarian it works really well with um, probably with a fighter. It works really well with a monk. It works really well with the paladin, the bard, the priest, the druid. I mean, this this special here is just pretty rhinoculous. I think it's like a six stamina, a second regen at at except when you get below 75 percent, 50 percent, and 25 percent stamina. It generates this. And if you think you have, and it worked, and this goes off to your party members too. So like if you have a high intelligence and that affects your your racial traits, then my goodness, this is that's one of the better ones for the godlike in my opinion. Um, I, it could probably be up to debate. Either way, let's get moving. Can't pronounce this, not going to try. I know I sound like I'm bored doing this, but that's because this is the literally like the eighth time I've tried. But it adds a burning effects, a burning effect onto ally weapons. Blessed was Wingrid quickest of his tribe increases movement speed and reflex of allies so I mean it's an it's a, it's a good boost I don't use this one particularly but others might so we're moving on to dull edge and blunt the point I reduce the slashing and piercing of enemies in the area of effect so it, it decreases damage of those and there are other ones later on which we'll see in a bit that are here in a moment actually that like uh, there's an invocation that in Increases your party's damage threshold for like slashing and shock damage. So like if you combine those, like slashing damage is not going to hurt your party. Um, this is one of them we're going to pick up. Thick grew their tongues, stumbling over words. Uh, reduces concentration of enemies in the area of effect. Um, this build's going to be an interrupt build, so that's going to help. Come comes soft winds of death. Drains a portion of stamina from all enemies in the area of effect. We're going to pick that up because it works. It'll pop up right after the concentration debuff and do an AoE. So AoE debuff, 
that reduces concentration, AOD stamina hit that will possibly interrupt them. That's the thought behind this, whether it works in principle or not. Um, I'll leave that for you to decide. I feel like it works really well against casters, although there's not that many of them in the current beta. Um, this build is really fun to play. I'm going to pick this one, but we'll go back to it in a second. But Rennie Derrett's Ghost, he would not rest. Calls beyond uh, the Shroud and summons a phantom to fight for the party. Um, this is one of the summons. Um, it's a shroud. It's a it's a white or some kind of ghostly apparition. Um, um, and it's a fairly sturdy single target or single creature summon. Now this one, if their bones still slept under that hill, none can say. Summons three skeletons to fight for your party. You can you can clear the beetle area with this almost just getting this out right off the bat and take very minimal damage and use very little resources and clear that whole area. That is a this is one of those things that makes things OP, I think. Others might disagree. Here's the one I was mentioning that reduces or increases your damage thresholds for your allies for uh, shock and slash damage. It's called not felled by the axe nor broken by the storm. So it is what it is. These three right here are all conal front-facing abilities, so you can, I mean, you can fire them in any direction you want, but, um, you just, it's basically like a dragon shout in Skyrim, for a lack of a better way of explaining it. Uh, the thunder rolled like waves on black seas. This, uh, is a stun slash shove. It pushes back away from the chanter, and it has, and it has a stun mechanic. Um, and it's one of those things that's, one of these instances where the, other than your auras that you put out, from chance, um, I think intelligence is very important for this class, and I know that the build I'm about to do doesn't have it, but if you are someone that wants to sit midfield and peg people with a blunderbust, and, or a blunderbust, I'm sorry, and, and, and while buffing your party, intelligence is the way to go, one of the ways to go. This is uh, thrice, thr thrice was she wrong, and thrice justly avenged. It, it basically shoots three bolts of lightning causing shock damage to any in their path. Whether or not this uh, hits three times, I don't think it does, but it still hits and it's an AoE, so it assists you can time this one, unlike with the stamina hit that I pointed out earlier, so if you see someone casting, boom, hit them with this. If you just hold off on casting your chance, don't be I mean, it's one of those things that you're going to build up chance. You don't have to use them right away. But on easy or normal, I would recommend using them right away because things tend to die before you get a second chance to use them. If, if you even get a first chance, if you're playing well. Um, this is White Worms Rides in the Bellies of the Dead. Um, expelling three white gr or it causes a nearby downed enemy to explode, expelling three white grubs and crushing damage to nearby enemies. Um... This one's a weird one. I can't tell if you have to somehow angle it so that the AOE has both a, a someone's corpse and people in it, but it is a conal ability. Or if you just have to have a corpse on the ground before you uh, before you cast it, I'm not sure. Um, it's been fairly inconsistent with me. I don't know if anyone else has noticed it. If you have or haven't, or you have an answer for me, post it in the thread that I'm going to make for this. We're going to go with a high dex, high perception build, actually 16 and 17 is the way we're going to go. And intellect's going to be 0, or at 10, just for an average. And we're going to have resolve at 15. This class won't be focused as much as some of the other classes would be, because they don't really do single target damage all that much, and if they do get focused, I mean, you'll have to scramble with this current build, but it's fun. Um, I don't want to use a big weapon. Where's the dexterity? Uh, we'll go with the mace. Just to point it out. Oh, I forgot to do that. Chanter. Got to cut to warn me of this. Stamina and health, 36 and 12 per level, respectively. Deflection is 20. It's considered high. Melee accuracy is 20, which is considered high. And ranged accuracy is 15, which is average. Um, and then this goes over normal stuff. We'll just point out that lore plus 2 and mechanics plus 1. 
and then we can move back to where we were. And just because I want to point it out, and next, and next. Uh, Ancestor Memory is a passive that chanters get. Anytime you are chanting, uh, your party regenerates stamina. Not much, but a little bit. And I want to point out now, right now, that chanters, ciphers, and wizards are the only three classes in the beta that do not get talents. I want to say that's a bug because I feel like they want talents, or not a bug, but a... They're just not there. It's not completed yet. Simply because I know they're the arcane classes, so it would make logical sense that they don't have talents if Obsidian didn't want them to. But those are the only three classes that don't. And if they're trying to build this game so that you can melee or not melee, you know, with every class, if you can play the the brute wizard, you know, or you can play, you know, if you're going to give that kind of variability to eight of the classes while letting them select weapon sets and stuff like that to be more physically combatant, like the druid, for instance, you can pick. Um, you know, a, a weapon focus for that class. Um, or the priest can do the same. Or, you know, I mean, if you're going to allow other classes to do it, I feel like the even the arcane classes should have that ability. And, uh, anyway, back on feet, the, the, one I, the reason I'm saying this is because I feel like there's probably a talent that will be in the game that will let you boost this. So if you want to be like a walking minor heal pot, you can be. Not that I, I haven't seen any heals uh, or stamina heals from the Chanter, though. So he just definitely does not have any that I've seen, unless there's a high level one. Heads for the uh, Moon Godlike are as such. We've got this one, this one, and the last one here is the Headless Horseman. Obviously not in the game yet. You cannot select skin or hair just like all the other Godlikes. You have no hair options here or facial hair options. Um, but it is what it is. So we are moving forward. We have, hopefully this time, things will work out. So here we are. There's your way you count. Uh, the zero at the bottom of the portrait here is showing you how many chants you've completed. So once you... The first level spells cost three, the second level spells cost four. So, um, just to give you a heads up. So they do go up. Hopefully, uh, I don't know. Um, hopefully we can get through this. I'm, I'm kind of terrified that it's not going to happen. And then all I like is the wizard, and these videos will be up as soon as they are uploaded. Um, I'm going to pick up this one. I don't know if I'll be able to show any of the, um, the, uh, chance, or not the chance, but the, uh, invocations, the big spells. I'm going to try. I'm going to show you a couple things with the way chanting works, and then we'll figure it out, uh, as we go. Um... Hopefully I can get a couple in and the game doesn't crash. If it does, I'm going to scream. Here's your second level phrases. Lo, their endless host, the Harbingers of Doom. It's a fear effect. Um, AoE, of course. Um, because it's around the caster. It's an aura type thing. The, this next one here, this one dozen sword against the power of the saint. Um, this reduces duration and defends against frightened and terrified effects for allies in the area of effect. Now, if you've seen the priest video I've done, or you watch the priest video, um, they have a spell called, or an ability, well, it's a spell, called uh, Prayers Against Fear, or something along those lines. It does the exact same thing. So, in this situation, the chanter has an ability. If the numbers sync up, that kind of decreases the need for a priest to cast that spell which would, in, in certain, there are areas in the beta where fear is being cast around fairly liberally um, 
at your party. And this spell and that, that priest spell come... I mean, they're useful. And if your priest doesn't have to worry about it, he's got four level one spells. I think it's level one that he can keep using. Now, once he, those become un, like in, per encounter abilities as he gets higher level, um, that becomes a different story. Um, but uh, just to point out, this is one of those instances where your priest isn't using resources, so your party can advance farther than it would without the chanter. Or at least in my opinion. Arguments can be had. This is Rhyme and Frost followed the footfalls of Karth. And every time I read this, I want to say Karth Onassi. Um, bestows an aura of frost upon allies that hobbles and causes freeze damage to enemies. Um, if you have a rogue or two in the party, this would be good. Because it, it puts an effect on them that hobbles people. So, And they're going to get that status bonus against that. So... Um, uh, we're going to pick this up because I'm going to exp I'll explain. If we're doing concentration debuffs and everyone has an aura that does frost damage and or you're doing stamina damage, all these like AoE damages make it harder for mages to cast. That's the principle of the build. Or at least the idea behind it. Whether it works functionally or not is up to... I, mean, I think it works fine. It works great. This is a caster killer I built. That's what its purpose is. The next one here is Sure-handed Illa knocked her arrows of speed. And the cool, this is a reload time and speed of ranged attack boost. It, it speed, it's a haste for ranged attacks for all allies in the area. So if you're playing a ranged heavy party, where your chanter's a ranged class, you have a, maybe a ranger or a rogue using ranged uh, weapons, or maybe you've even built a fighter that uses them. Um, and the, like, and you you know you got three or four party members constantly using r physical ranged and Built atta attacks like this. Maybe you have an arcane archer. Like this chant is so worthwhile. Like uh, I personally think that it's cool that they separated the difference between a ranged haste and a melee haste. I don't I haven't even seen a melee haste, but the fact that they've differentiated that, like there's not one that does it all. There's not one ring to rule them all here. Um, it means that, uh, I don't know, I like that. I, I think that haste is too easy most of the time. I'm, of course, if you're in a fairly physical group, be it with, with melee or ranged, or a mix of the two, one haste will do it for everybody, so wizard's going to probably have haste. But it is what it is. Arguments can be made again. Opinions differ. The fox from the farmer did run and leap. This reduces the accuracy of disengagement attacks in four enemies in the area of effect. So if you have to move out, this will decrease their chance of hitting you. Or not or decrease their chance of, of getting a full hit or a crit on you for disengaging. Um, limited usefulness in my opinion, I don't know how useful it'll be. Um, to each their own. Some people might move out of combat a fair bit. I don't typically with my playstyle. Um because Okay, so these are your chants. These are your phrases. You make chants by combining phrases. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so what... So here's the thing. If you change chants, I don't know if this is intended or not. If you swap chants in the, and you have three chant counters up, you lose them. So because I want you to see all these effects, I'm just going to make one big chant. But you can make multiple ones, and you can rename them, and you can have up to four. So you could make them for different circumstances, and you can, I mean, this is this reminds me a little bit of the way the wizard worked. You have to, pre you, it's preparation. Now, whether you can open this book mid-combat and change your sample chance, I'm unsure. I hope not. I hope you have to think about it, and you have to prep. Because prepared chance. I hope you have to prepare. Because if you walk into a situation and your chance aren't right, I don't think you should be able to just stop and be like, hold on, bad guys, and 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 fix it. But I just wanted to show you how that worked. Uh, the, the the finishing a phrase gives you a point. So if they finish this and it's this string in its entirety, I get three points. If they finish this string in its entirety, I get four. So what we're going to do, even though typically what I would probably do is weave in this, um, 
I would probably, if I were going to make a chant to be effective, that would be what it would look like, and I would alternate, or I would just keep repeating these two, these two right here, but I want you to see all the effects, so I am going the full money there, and I'm deleting this one. Hopefully we'll get through this without crashing. The, I, every time the fire comes up, that's right when I start crashing. So I've noticed that. Or when I'm about to beat these guys. Hopefully that won't happen. Another thing, chants are in combat only. You can't Going. activate them outside. So it's not like a bard running around the wilderness in Baldur's Gate. You can't just run around with a chant up. Or with a song up. Yes, very well. So I'm going to move this guy here, switch the rogue over to ranged as usual. Um, I'm going to start by dropping a bomb, and the priest is going to go cast that deep on. Yes. Down. Rogue's gonna hit that person too. Yes. And I'm gonna start this chant. Very well. I have four counters here. Yes. My channer, so we're gonna break out and I'm gonna kill this guy. Forget him. So my guy's getting pummeled. I'm getting focused more than Okay, now I'm not going to commit to any attacks. Oh, he's dead. Um, no rogue, you don't have that. Fighter, you don't have that. You guys can disengage. That's fine. Hmm. Ah. I was hoping to get another shout off for you, but I think I killed her. With uh, the stamina debuff. But, uh,. The summon, I, w I would like to have shown you the summon on top of the lightning, but the summon basically will summon one guy to fight for you, and he seems kind of buggy too, he doesn't like to always fight. He might be a pacifist, uh, shade. Yes. But that is the chanter, thank everything holy we got through it without crashing this time. Um, the flame effects are cool, by the way, obsidian, the weapon, I Going. like the flame effects on the weapons, they're really pretty. Um, but I do believe they were what was uh, was killing my game for whatever reason. But I got through it finally, yay! Um, but yes, you can. Uh, that is the that is really the chanter. That is it in a nutshell. Um, the one thing the cipher has over the chanter is he starts with spells. Like he starts with like 35 focus, and he can cast like two spells right off the bat, and then build focus. I think it's something like five a hit. Whereas the uh, it might be more than that. Uh, whereas the monk and the chanter have to wait for... The monk has to wait for wounds, and the chanter has to wait for a, a, a phrase to finish to get one. And it takes three to get to one spell. Um, so, like, that's something, like, odd about the chanter. Like, it takes... It takes him longer to be able to use his abilities than the other two classes that use similar abilities. But his seem to be more potent. So, it is what it is. But... 
hopefully you found it interesting. And like I said, I've played a good bit of the channel. If any of you have questions, just shoot them my way. I'll do what I can to answer them. Um, I hope the I hope that uh, some of you might actually consider playing the class, even to all you bard haters out there, because they're not the same, and uh, and they're a lot of fun. And you can play them pretty much any way you want. You can go ranged with them. You can go. Um, heavy armor with them, if you would like, with fire, swords, and and screaming electricity at people. Like, you can do that, and it's easy to do that. Um, I've done multiple playthroughs in different ways with heavy armor and a two-handed sword and doing damage shouts and stun shouts and things like that. And then I've done this build, and I enjoy this build a lot, actually. But everyone's different, so the channer is very versatile. So, if I, uh, I've got one more video to do, and I should have these videos up soon, um, up and ready to go, I'll post it on the forums. Uh, and that video is the wizard, which will be a long one, because they have a lot of spells to go through. But, uh, I will, uh, I will have that video up, ho finished hopefully tonight, and, uh, I can get them uploaded and up by tomorrow. So, uh, stay tuned for the wizard, I guess. Rogue and the fighter are done, so the wizard's literally the last one. So, if you, uh, Ganrich is my handle on the forums if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. You guys take care.